so here he is, the still undefeated Umar Nurmagomedov. And we do hope eventually he gets into those title eliminators and back to those UFC main events because a lot of people are bullish on his chances to dethrone the Bantamweight champion, whoever that is, when his moment arrives. Still training on the watchful eye of Javier Mendez at the American Kickboxing Academy. Cardio Kane Velazquez has been a huge influence of late on Umar Nurmagomedov. Health is wealth, though, right? Wasn't able to make the walk for the Sandhagen fight. He's healthy again tonight. Let's see if he can put that best foot forward. giant and most people believe that when Corey Sandhagen gets to an undisputed championship setting he will break the door down. Inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Umar Nurmagomedov. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending, undefeated UFC featherweight champion of the World Corey Sandhagen! One of the best in the business, Herb right. Dean, is our referee tonight. Right. Yeah. All right, so Corey Sandhagen learned a lot about approaching the early part of these rounds in his quick loss to Aljamain Sterling. And you just see a different look in his eyes now when he begins these rounds. There's just a different focus about Corey Sandhagen. Prevailing wisdom is he's going to try to get this fight to the ground here tonight. All right, early round action here on the kickbox. He's not going to win the fight by stuffing one takedown, but... So far, so good as far as his takedown defense is concerned. It's a great start, right? Because it's something to build off of. But he has to truly understand he cannot be content with only stopping one. He's got to recognize that he's got to stop multiple over the course of this fight. Oh, nice slip there to avoid the punch by Umar Nurmagomedov. It's a nice jab by him there. Nice shot there by the champ. Beautiful left punch, man. Just over three minutes to go, round one. Back and forth we go. Now he counters with a right hook to the head. Oh, a 
Nice inside leg kick landed there. He's going to get team. Romago Medoff swelling now around the jaw area, so we'll keep an eye on that as this fight continues. He's really working hard for his guillotine, but he can't blow out his arms. He's got to make sure it's secure. Oh, somehow, some way, he got out. These guys are back and forth, but the submission defense wins this transition. Good work from the top here by Sanders. Well, another punch on the ground gets through. May need some defense here. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. All oh, the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's going to stop us. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push the play, try to escape in a very, very dangerous position. Big knee lands there. Under a minute to go in round one. Very fast jab lands for Oh, head. Oh, oh, he's hurt, he's hurt. Oh, got to keep pressing here. Big left hand there inside. So, under 30 seconds to go in what has been a pretty entertaining and active first round. Oh. Round two is next. Oh. Well, I'm not sure the extent to which he has recovered, but we do see the end of the round. DC, talk us through the replay. Well, he's a tough guy. He's going to make it to the stool. He's going to survive unless you put him completely out of there. Unfortunately, he's in there with a guy that does have that ability. All right, next round is now underway. DC, any major takeaways after the previous five minutes? That both of these guys are very evenly matched. The matchmakers did a fantastic job when they put these two in the octagon. So even though it wasn't crazy, you got to see high-level mixed martial arts. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Oh, nice hook. And there's that jab. Well, straight right hand has been a good weapon for him. He misses with it there. Sanhagen gets absolutely melted by that head kick. Beautiful jab there by the champ. Oh, nice combination there. He is just killing him with volume two. Jab, right hand, body shot, kicks. What a masterful show of different techniques and ability to throw a combination. Man, look at the redness now almost immediately on the right side of his body. Oh, brutal knee to the body. Look at the rip action that comes from I give one, I take one. You give one, you take one. That's how this fight is being played out. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here, and as a result, has really picked up the pace in round two. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Oh, massive kick lands flush. Sanhagen gets hit and flushed with that overhand. Can't absorb too many more of those if you want to stay in this fight. All right, so he lands again just like we saw in the last round, realizing a lot of success with his Muay Thai game tonight. You know, why change it? It's working, and it's working from the very start of the fight. The moment this fight started, you saw the advantage that we predicted was... Oh!
Oh, there's a takedown attempt. <laughs> 20 seconds left. Magomedov gets caught with that punch. There's the horn, the round is over, but not before he was cut on his nose from the strikes in that round. Back to the stool, cut man is in. Should be able to shut that cut and prevent it from becoming an issue moving forward. But of course, as soon as he gets struck in that next round, it could open back up. All right, well, one minute of end swell can only do so much. Let us look back at some of the damaging strikes in that previous round. It doesn't seem like it's gonna do much, and if it does, he can't take any more of these shots. He was too stationary. He took everything square on the target. He's got to move his head, and he's got to be proactive instead of reactive Ready in fight. terms of his defenses. Ready. Go Here we go, third round of this championship fight. All right, so another round is now underway. Pretty good action over the previous 10 minutes. Your thoughts on what we might see here? Both of the guys really picking up on the action, putting their foot on the gas, and really starting to drive it home as we approach the end of the fight, and we're still so evenly matched, and the fight has been so close to this point. Well, just as he did in the previous round, continuing to land a high number of strikes here, and he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down. Scary, scary proposition for the opponent. Well, no feeling out process tonight. Both fighters invoking damage on the other side. Yes, we knew this would be very competitive. We knew that this was a tough fight. We knew that both guys would be very evenly matched in this fight. But we didn't expect to see this type of war between these two guys. Looking to land the right just out of range. Stuff the takedown, no problem. Oh, shot to the body connects there. He hasn't really thrown too many body strikes in this fight, but now, as this fight goes on, he is not discriminating, working the body, and those shots are gonna count. Sam Hagen's in half goal. Nice transition. Now he's going full mount. Oh, great ground strike there, and now blood is a factor. He's got to be careful here. Oh, how about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. All right, full guard now, DC. And for the guy on top, he needs to build posture or just go to the next position, start shoving that knee through, trying to get the half guard, which in turn will lead to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom, you need to be anticipating, you need to be framing, you need to be moving, looking for opportunities to either reverse the position or get back to your feet. North-south position. All right, so some definite damage underneath the elbow now on the side of his opponent. A lot of strikes to the body starting to, starting to add up. Yeah, a lot of strikes to the body and mixing up the attack, not being one-dimensional, not headhunting inside the octagon. I, I think he has fought beautifully right now, but he's starting to show itself. Oh, he's attacking choke now. Oh, I'm no expert, but that Von Flu choke looks locked in. Three rounds in the books, we are headed to the championship rounds. All right, so the round is over, and you see the cut man not wasting any time as the fighter makes his way back to the stool. The cut man will try to shut that cut on the bridge of his nose and prevent it from becoming a factor here moving forward. All right, so there's the horn at the end of the round. Multiple takedowns landed for him over the previous five minutes. And you know what, John? Even more importantly, look at the opponent now. He's afraid to pull the trigger because he's been taken down so many times. Getting taken down is one thing, but getting it, having it happen to you continuously really does make you gun shy. And right now, he's very tentative to let his offense go fight? because of the fear go. of getting taken down go. back to the match. We have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five five-minute rounds. 
right, so here we go. Fourth round is underway. What is the fighter's mentality when you enter those seminal championship rounds? You understand that you are getting close now. The night is almost over. Oh! shot lands. It's over, John. Fight's done. Oh, now he's going to find himself in a little more danger. There it is. Now he's going to mount. Oh. He's going to fight back. Romago Medoff's in half guard now. That was nice. Lands with the ground and pound here. Sam Higgins back in full mouth. Another ground and pound strike lands. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack the guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear chokes in this. Sam Higgins taking aim at that cut right now and hard to blame him, right? Might as well continue to target that area and see if you might get a referee or even a doctor to intervene here. Thank you for a ride. Nice double leg, nice finish. All right, they separate now. We'll see who can get off in space. Oh. Well, I think I can... Oh, no. Well, a lot of fighters say there's no worse feeling on fight night than when your cardio abandons you, and there's been a lot of output in this fight, but both of these men are absolutely against. They both fought very hard, but after round one, you saw one guy fight with you. Good night, guys. And in the second round, you saw the other guy. Good night, guys. Now they're left with no cardio, and it's gonna be a question of will and determination, and that's gonna be who wins the fight. Well, he rocked him, but couldn't finish him. He rocked him. He hurt him bad. He couldn't find that one shot to close the door. Could not shut the lights off. And now he's tasked with trying to find that shot again. Oh, he's oh! oh man, he's a hard. Oh, he's got a guillotine. That guillotine is tight. A big part of submission defense is just being able to relax in the face of adversity. Great submission defense. Ten seconds remaining here in round four. Oh, he's got it locked in. He's got that arm triangle. Deep. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, so a huge round for him there. That head kick probably would have had me out for good. The guy survives to see another round. Yeah, but he'll go back to that. It landed so perfectly. He set it up great. He did a great job of mixing up the target early, going up high, and getting the desired result. You ready to fight? Ready. Good. Fifth and final round, fourth cover. Sam Hagen gets hit with a kick here. That one landed flush. Let's see if he can make some adjustments. Straight right hand now just misses. Well, we may have the best cut men and women in the business, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to do much with that cut. It continues to widen with every passing stroke. And you're fighting a great fighter. It's hard to deal with the damage of the cut while dealing with the level of the fighter in front of you. Right now, you've got to do something different to try and change the way that this fight is playing. Out. Sidekick. He's just being more aggressive, and because he's being more aggressive and more loose with his strikes, he's landing. Just over three minutes now to go in the fight. All right, relax and breathe. 
Well, he is clearly losing this fight. It has not been his best performance, but he can change all of that with a late submission. He struggled because he hasn't been able to get this fight to the ground. Now he needs to abandon his setup to his takedown, grab his opponent, and try to take him to the floor so he can chase the submission. Oh, big roundhouse attempt just misses. That could have been lights out. And the front kick is there. Nice job by Sandy. Oh! Could be the beginning of the end here. Michael Mena goes in for the takedown now, and he's able to get it. So a nice entry and a wise move, given how the things were playing out on the field. Sanhagen getting absolutely worked here from the top. These are some very effective ground and pound strikes. Trying to recover full guard there. Oh, slick reversal right there. Fight back! Fight back! One minute to go in the fight! Mago Medov's in half court. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. And now he's just a choke. Ooh, arm triangles in tight. It's getting there very tight. Good job by the champ there. Slide back out. Work, guys, come on. Well, that was a high level extended battle on the ground. Now, though, the athletes back to their feet. And no surprise, the crowd responds in time. The crowd just loved. Back and forth action right until the final horn. That one's going to hold up in the fight of the year conversation. Well, what a title fight it was. What a showcase it was for this division. But at the end of the day, the champion just did a little bit more. And you got to think he gets the nod, right? I believe it was the championship experience that allowed him to push through in those spots that he needed to in order to keep his championship. I agree with you, J.A. I think he keeps the belt. All right, the official decision is now in. Here is Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 49-47. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still the undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Corey Sanhagen. All right, so there he is, the still UFC bantamweight.